Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. Get everything you need for your holiday meal at Whole Foods Market. Right now, you'll find Animal Welfare Certified Rib Roast on sale. It's a deliciously crowd-pleasing centerpiece. Plus, save on spiral sliced ham, bone-in lamb, and seasonal produce like sweet potatoes and honey crisp apples. For ready-to-eat sides, head to the prepared food section. Done. And remember that Whole Foods Market caters. Order gourmet catering at shop.wfm.com. Bring the holiday magic with Whole Foods Market. Welcome to the True Beauty Brooklyn podcast. I'm Elizabeth Taylor. And I'm Alex Shapiro. We're estheticians in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and we work with really incredible, diverse, ambitious, and driven people who are killing it in life. They deserve to be celebrated, and on this podcast, we're going to be sharing their stories with you. Yeah, and in between our interview episodes, we'll have Beauty School, where it's just the two of us, maybe some guest stars, and we'll be chatting about beauty, life, weird shit about being in your 30s, and learning more about one another, because that's what makes us more similar than different. Also, we're a lot of fun, and we have a super multicultural community, and we kind of think that you might too. So, why not talk about all things beauty under one black and Jewish roof? Plus, we'll be answering listener questions, so be sure to write us at truebeautybrokenpodcast at gmail.com. All right, guys, let's jump into the show. Oh, hey guys. Hey. Welcome to the True Beauty Brooklyn podcast. Welcome. It's Elizabeth and Alex. We're back, baby. We're back. I'm not alone this time. I'm a little awkward turtle self. No, you guys loved it. it I loved it because my homegirl Alex came and she, you know, she hooked it up. Girl was dealing with some shit and Alex said, you know what, girl, I got you. That's true friendship. (laughs) Honestly, so I appreciate it. (sighs) Missed you guys. We back. We back. Ay, ay. We've got a great new episode. That was for you great. Guys I let today. Elizabeth just take that one on herself. She really likes to perform. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I come in with something, but I'm like, no, girl's got it. Okay. It's been weeks. I, been miss- I told you, I missed it. <laughs> she missed this. She missed hearing herself. Oh, God. On the it's microphone. true. I wish it wasn't true. <laughs> so funny. Um, okay. Today we have a great guest named. Erica Leon, Mm -hmm. and she is a dietitian. Um, Her and her team help clients with their lifelong struggles with body image and weight concerns. So similar to a guest we've had before, Alyssa Rumsey, she utilizes a philosophy which supports people in adopting habits for the sake of their health and well-being rather than controlling their weight, which is something we really stand by because we hate diet culture. Totally. And I'm sure a lot of you do too. I hope that you guys do. And if you don't, maybe by the end of this episode, episode you will. I mean, yeah. we I'm so actually happy at the end of the day that we ran Alyssa's episode a couple of weeks ago because I really think that it tees us up for Erica's yeah. today. There's um, a lot of cross information. There's a lot of things that we like covered that we're continuing with Erica. Yes. The thing is Erica <laughs> is in her 60s. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to get to. So she also talks about this from kind of a different perspective and also she's been a dietitian for over 30 years Mm -hmm. and has shifted. She's seen the culture change. She's seen it change and she's shifted her practice. Totally. And I think that's huge. And we know that that generation can be fucking stubborn. Oh, yeah. Boomers. There's (laughs) jokes about them. You guys made them up. (laughs) (laughs) So I just think it's huge. And she does talk a bit about getting older and what that means for our bodies, but not in a negative way like it's always fucking talked about. No, I think that we just have this really... Really honest conversation about aging, about how we look at food and nutrition and how we judge ourselves and how enough is enough, do you know? And how also, do you know, if this is something that you have struggled with, you know, disordered eating or an eating disorder or, you know, body dysmorphia or... Or maybe you're just tired of seeing all of these things that pertain to diet culture and you're looking yeah. for something. You're looking for something because you're like, I care about my health. Totally. But 
that's not it. Yeah. I think that this is a great episode to just like make you feel less alone, make you feel okay, make you feel like, okay, you know what? This is something that maybe I'm going to deal with for forever. Maybe I've dealt with it in the past. And also like, it's not your fault for dealing with these things or for feeling these ways. Like there's these systems that are put in place that work so fucking well that we don't even know that they're working. And I, it's been like my, the thing mm-hmm. that I've been like thinking about so much these past couple of months is like these systems, like we don't even, we're so tuned in that we don't even know we're fucking doing it. It's insane. It's true. And the only way that we can stop these systems from working is by sharing this knowledge, by sharing information, mm-hmm. by creating sisterhoods and communities and, you know. Talking to Erica was really fun. I also feel like she gave a few good tips of wisdom. Totally. For us ladies who are younger than her. Yeah. What I, I learned love, a lot. I learned a ton. And I just, before we get let you guys go and fall in love with Erica like we did, I do just want to say that this is one of the guests that our dear friend Alyssa recommended when we reached out and we told her about the body episode and we told her we wanted to bring in guests that were going to talk about bodies that were different from her, from ours. And she was like, that's great, but I don't think it should be me. I've got great colleagues that I think would fit right into this. And this is one of them. And so we're so grateful to her for helping us to be true to our message and bring in different people to yeah. share their ways of thinking and living so that you guys can maybe just open your minds a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I know that not all of our listeners are our age. We've had plenty of you write in who mm. say that they're in their 50s or even older. Totally. And so maybe this will also be nice for you to have someone of your same age chatting. And you know what, guys? This is also, you know, our parents are starting to get older. Like if you're Alex and our and my age or a little bit older, like if you're in your 40s, our parents are getting older. And this is something that it didn't just fucking start with our generation. It's not going to end with our generation. This has been going on to women to people that's been going on with people and with control and with ways to stop us all from rising up, I guess, against the fucking patriarchy and the powers that be and whatever. It didn't start with us. It's not going to end with us. So I don't know. Take a look at your parents. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they've struggled before. Maybe it's their belief systems that have made you think this way. So I don't know. I just think it was so enlightening to speak with somebody from a different generation. Say the same damn shit. So true. In a new light. Say the same shit, but better. Mm -hmm. All right. Enjoy our chat with Erica Leon. So hi there, my name is Erica Leon. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and I have been a dietitian for a million years. I um, have a group private practice in Westchester County. We see people of all sizes and shapes and colors and just helping them to learn to make peace with food in their bodies. That's what I do. I love that. Yeah. Uh, How did you get into being a dietitian? I'm just curious. So I have an interesting story because I have been in this field a very long time. I'm like in my 60s. And I started, I don't think I really thought even that I was going to be a nutritionist. I thought I wanted to be a doctor. I was a pre-med in college. And I just, uh, I didn't think I could cut it, to be honest. I was very insecure. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me volunteer in the hospital and see what it's like, if I really want to do it. And I ended up volunteering with the nutrition department. And that was like, that was it. So this is, for whatever reason, this feels like a good fit. So I changed my major to nutrition. And then became a dietitian wow. and did a lot of different things in, in the I do, field. I love when life does so that. Like the fact that that just worked. You were like, I'm going to go volunteer. You happen to be in that department. You happen mm-hmm. to like it. That's nice. It was your yeah. calling. Yeah. It, 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 yes, it was my calling. And, you know, even all the jobs that I've had in, in, in you know during this period of time, I've, I've used my nutrition background. It, it's clearly my calling. Like everybody, I started 30 years ago. We thought that weight loss was the thing to do that everybody had to get healthy by focusing on weight loss. And so I did that for a while and realized that that was just backfiring, causing a lot of problems Mm -hmm. with disordered eating. So I, you know, I've shifted my whole practice. Mm -hmm. So 30 Um, years ago, that was like in the nineties. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god i have to tell you i'm gonna dying. just admit my age I, my first job was like in the 80s so yeah, maybe well. like 40 years ago my god yeah, i'm yeah. tripping over that number um <laughs> no <laughs> and like, that was the area of fat free mm-hmm, low yeah. fat 
you know, snack wells, cookies. Mm-hmm. I remember probably those before green boxes. you were born, probably your parents, you know, that diet culture was very, very loud. And that was so many, honestly, so many eating disorders were born out of low fat and fat free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe it. I remember my yeah. mom eating the the snack well devil's food cookies. I yes. actually loved those yes, as a kid. Yes, I remember those too. Um, or like all the fat free chips with Olean, you know, that stuff that was making everyone oh my shit goodness, themselves. Exactly. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Everyone was just pooping. <laughs> just pooping their pants and it's like the complete and people, opposite. people were so desperate that they would consume those mm-hmm. and suffer the consequences, the side effects of right, messy. Yeah. So side scary. Effects. Yeah. I guess it was also still a time I mean, I feel like we just as a society with eating and health have evolved so much since then, but that was a time where it was like, uh, yeah, you just did whatever the fad diet was. It didn't matter how it affected your actual health. You're just like, I want to be skinny. The end. You know, I have this very vivid memory of a job that I did a lot of different jobs, by the way, until I sort of developed my private practice. I used to work in public relations as as a nutritionist. And one of my accounts was the OptiFast account. And mm. that was when Oprah Winfrey went on that liquid diet. I don't know if you remember mm, the vision vaguely. of her wheeling a wagon filled with fat across the stage. I had to promote that. I had to talk about how amazing this diet program was. Look at Oprah. Yeah. You know, everyone in the world should go on Optifast. And it was, in retrospect, it was really inconsistent with my values doing that kind of work. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was definitely one of my first jobs, you know, promoting that. What low calorie weight loss well, diet? What was your sorry, everyone. before you became a nutritionist? What was your experience personally within, you know, your own body image within nutrition, within how you saw yourself and how you saw food that led you to this path? Yeah, so I don't think I really ever thought about dieting until I was a teenager, mm-hmm. and you know, this was you know, in the sixties. It was truly it was the sixties, and I remember being in high school. And for whatever reason, I don't even remember how or why it started, but I remember being on a diet, bringing in food. I went to the High School of Music and Art, um, which is now called LaGuardia, I guess. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's the I went to, school. Yeah, went to so that casual. school. And I remember, I like, LaGuardia. we would go to – It was it, at the time, it was – on the ground to City College. That was where my, that was <laughs> where the school was. Mm-hmm. And I remember bringing in like my diet food mm-hmm. and I can remember, I can see it. Yes. But I remember bringing in this tiny amount of food and what was I doing? We were looking for guys. We were, you know, with my friends. Yeah. So definitely remember dieting. Were you a dancer or a singer or what were singer. you doing? Okay. Singer. Yeah. But either way, yeah. you know, the entertainment industry, it's very, you know, it's always been very about like what you look like, especially as a woman. It's not just about your, you know, look, they would rather have a beautiful woman, have somebody else singing her voice, use like somebody else with a beautiful voice than to show the person who might not be, you know, classically beautiful for until yesterday, basically. That's the way that things Ab- were. Absolutely. You know, I know this is, I'm going to go on a tangent, but my, my daughter, was going to be going into musical theater. She was very talented and did all the auditions, got into all the conservatories and made a decision. She said, hey, you know, I'm going to have an eating disorder. I can see that I'm like, I'm afraid to eat. I don't want people to look at me in my leotard and I want to have a flat stomach. And so she made a decision to not go into that line of work. So it is very competitive. You're right. So even back then, I must have known it. Yeah, but good for her. And I I just had an aha moment. Thank you, ladies. (laughs) That's what we're here this, for. You know, we're just here to chat and gab and figure things out. Um, but it is kind of crazy. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of us in teenagehood, but I even remember, maybe it was from my mom being on like these fat free diets because in the 90s, I was like, I was born in 88. So I was young. Yeah. Like I, not that back then I cared that I was dieting, but I definitely thought about it mm-hmm. at like eight, nine, 10 years old. Because mm-hmm. it was everywhere. That is so- it was everywhere. Wild when you think about it, an eight-year-old thinking about their bodies. Yes, I mean I don't think I really thought about my body until I was a teenager. I think that sort of was the norm. But now we're seeing, we're seeing five-year-olds, mm-hmm. not just eight-year-olds. Like mm-hmm. people are are learning about diet culture out of the womb. It's because we're it's we're swimming in the sea of diet culture. Yeah, it's just in the air that we breathe. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting how. As women specifically, so much of this is sort of like innate. It's just no, none of us really know. Like in having these conversations, like we don't know where these ideas came from. They've just always been there. It's just always you are a woman. You're too big. (laughs) Just by like taking up space. Bitch, you're too big. Get skinnier. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so it's weird. really, really destructive. Yes. You know, I yes. think I, what I'm saying is one of my earliest jobs, you know, in addition to doing this, this <laughs> public relations work with, with Oprah, I then had a private practice where we did weight loss. Mm -hmm. And I had whole families with, we're at, really now we're trying to reclaim the word fat, um, mm -hmm. but whole families of quote unquote overweight, we don't like to use that word, overweight kids and their moms. And, and I would put them on diets. I would weigh them every week. And, you know, I'm doing it long enough to now have some of those kids who I had helped lose weight when they were kids, uh -huh. develop full bone eating disorders and sort of contact me again. I'm, I'm actually friendly with some of them kind of like really challenging diet culture saying, look, look at this, look what this did. This destroyed our lives. This, yeah. this really sent me into a full bone eating disorder. Um, these, these kids really suffered. Wow. So we've really just gone complete, you know, yeah. 360. Okay. You know, so and going against diets, diets just don't work. Yeah. So let's talk about yeah. that. Let's talk about where, where you are today, where you stand in, because you are, you're part of the fat positivity movement. I mean, I think that there's like a, hu a large portion of people who are now part of it, but I'm excited to speak with you specifically mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, it's, it's really wild witnessing what we've all like lived through, right. For, I guess, like, <laughs> centuries at this point and it's really beautiful to see sort of like this this huge uh, community of people just saying enough is enough yeah, it's like a revolution yeah exactly i'm curious how you got to that point totally exactly take us into yeah, this world it's an it's, it's an interesting story and i want to sort of compare it to an onion and and sort of peeling away the end the, the layers of the onion mm -hmm. because i think initially i realized that diets don't work and i even before sort of this that positivity even before it was around I, I stopped putting kids on diets. I stopped that. And I started to really just try to kind of meet people where they are. I mean, it's it's very difficult for people to put the idea of intentional weight loss on the back burner. We always try to tell them, like, don't don't focus on your weight. Let's focus on, you know, being quote unquote healthy, whatever that healthy means. And obviously even that word healthy is, you know, very ableist. Mm -hmm. But trying to people kind of glom onto that. <laughs> they like hearing that. And yeah. that's kind of the first layer. And that's what I did for a while. And the more I did that work, the more I realized learning about diet culture, learning the origins of diet culture, it's more onion peeling. Yeah. It's, it's not just about like diet culture being in the air that we breathe. It's part of a larger system of, of oppression. Mm -hmm. Of and I, I actually heard you speaking with Alyssa Ramsey about mm -hmm. the BMI. And I think she talked about Sabrina Strings and fearing the black body. Totally. And yeah. really understanding, like particularly in the last year and a half, I'll just say, seeing how diet culture is really rooted in racism mm -hmm. and really sort of making that going deep, <laughs> deep into the onion yeah, and really challenging. Like who the hell says that we should look any particular way? We are who we are. Yeah. I have this exercise I do with some of my clients and I can, I've been thinking a lot about it and thinking about we, we look like our ancestors, you know, we all come in different sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. And you would never try to wear a size six shoe if you had an eight. But that is what we're challenged to do in this culture, which is, by the way, it's a white supremacist culture. And <laughs> P.S. And I, yeah, yeah, we, we get it. Yeah. But to really challenge, like, what do my ancestors look like? And I've been thinking a lot about my grandmother. Mm -hmm. My grandmother came from Russia. And I, I really have a, a very close association with Brooklyn because my grandmother and my, you know, my other, on the other side as well, they came through Ellis Island and they lived in Brooklyn. Yeah, <laughs> they came yeah. there from, from Europe. They were all in large bodies. Yeah. They were fat. You know, they didn't have fast food. They moved their bodies. My grandmother was like a seamstress in a, in a sweatshop. You know, she was the forewoman. Totally. They were voluptuous that was because the you had to, because that they had her. to survive also. There were things that they had to survive where like, you can't, like, look, fat keeps you alive. Like, Absolutely. you know what I mean? And your grandparents <laughs> had to fucking survive a lot. And so they needed all of that body to make it to Ellis Island so that you could be here. Absolutely. You know? I think a lot about that. I think about that grandpa. They were they were escaping the pogroms in Poland. Yeah. They had to have, to have body fat to be able to flee. Yeah. <laughs> to flee 100%, the Nazis. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I invite everyone to sort of think back and look at their ancestry and see what their family lineages totally so that really sort of looking at that looking peeling the, the onion layers and looking deeper really understanding that we all are meant to be in our own bodies mm -hmm. 
I think it's really helped. It's helped me get a better perspective. It's something that I try to teach all of my clients who some are, you know, honestly, some are a little bit resistant. They don't quite understand or see the, the deeper layers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to try to find them, sort of meet them where they are. Yeah. Um, sort of step one is challenging diet culture and putting weight loss on the back burner. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of level one. Level two goes a little bit deeper. And I try to bring in the, the anti-racism work to some of the clientele that I have and really try to help them go <laughs> deeper into the onion and really see it and understand it. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. I hope yeah. That, does that make sense? Absolutely. It, like, it makes yes. perfect sense. I also... I'm only bringing up your age because you said you were in your 60s. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when we had Alyssa on, I know Alyssa through a good friend of mine. And, you know, Alyssa is a little bit older than us, but not much. We're both in our like early to mid 30s. But I think I'm really surprised in a way that you're doing this work because you are older and you've been in this industry a very long time where it really wasn't until I feel like pretty recently that things have shifted. So that had to have been like a really big deal for you to make such a switch and for maybe, you know, your whole business to make that switch. Yes. I'm going to be really brutally honest here because why not? Yeah. Uh, This is who I am. I'm unapologetic as well. I live in a very white affluent area. The clientele that I've seen for many, many years, um, it's like you can never be too rich or too thin. Well, you know, you, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And I see, I see the problems. Mm-hmm. I see, I see the kids with the eating disorders. Like that, unfortunately, I mean, look, having an eating disorder, there's so many factors. It's not mm-hmm. just about dieting. But the idea that we need to keep ourselves small and restrict, I, I've really started to do a lot of anti racism work. And, you know, again, it's going to be peeling that onion a little bit deeper. And I can't say that everyone, that I work with is, is coming along with me. So it is just, honestly, it's challenging. And I'm sort of working through that right now myself, hiring some new people, um, Mm -hmm. looking to diversify. It's a challenge. Yeah. I'll just say that right. Yeah. Honestly. Look, look, it's not easy. (laughs) It's not easy because if it was, it would have been done already. Right. If it was easy, then we wouldn't be fighting it. We wouldn't be fighting patriarchy. It would just be the norm. norm, Uh Right. But it should be the norm. Yeah. It should be the norm. Yeah. Get everything you need for your holiday meal at Whole Foods Market. Right now, you'll find animal welfare certified rib roast on sale. It's a deliciously crowd pleasing centerpiece. Plus, save on spiral sliced ham, bone in lamb, and seasonal produce like sweet potatoes and honey crisp apples. For ready to eat sides, head to the prepared food. Food section done and remember that whole foods market caters order gourmet catering at shop.wfm.com bring the holiday magic with whole foods market this episode is brought to you by seed seeds dso1 is a two-in-one probiotic and prebiotic designed for whole body health Formulated with 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains, DSO-1 offers benefits in and beyond the gut. See why DSO-1 is the probiotic recommended by top doctors and nutritionists. Go to seed.com slash Spotify for 25% off Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. I think that we all suffer from the way that our society is designed. Yeah. I feel really sad. Yeah. Um, I, I, I look to my kids who are sort of the next better generation. I'll, if, is it okay? Can I talk about my daughter for a moment? Oh, of, of course. course. Of co- of course. <laughs> she's probably, how old is she? She's probably like 27. Age. Okay. She's really young. And what's interesting, I'll, I'll, I think what probably got me sort of along along this route is that my daughter, you know, we, we are Jewish. You know, I talked about my, my family too. escaping the Holocaust. My kids were, went to Hebrew school. You know, we were not religious particularly, but a we culturally were Jewish. And my daughter decided at the age of 18, instead of going into musical theater, she um, converted um, and became Muslim. And wow. um, I think that sort of was the beginning of my real in-depth understanding of understanding diversity and respect wow. and tolerance, because there was a lot of disrespect. People didn't really understand why she chose this. Yeah. And uh, We've we we really learned a lot as a family. It's helped us have a deeper appreciation for for the rest of the world. Yeah. And she's married now. She's married to a lovely lovely man, and we have a whole family. That's another culture. Yeah, um, that's so nice. I love this. So I, yeah, I've learned a lot. And she, you know, she keeps saying she has. She said, "Why is it that this piece of cloth on my head should make anyone feel uncomfortable with me?" 
Yeah. And she does, she used to get a lot of stares because she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she said, I still get stares because they're staring at me. Oh, I said, well, you know, Rebecca, they're seeing your magnificent face even more so. (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) But yeah, that piece of cloth, like why should that separate us? Yeah. Why should anything separate us? Why should the color of our skin separate us? Mm -hmm. But it does. Yeah. Unless you're willing to challenge the way the things are. I love that somebody so close to you really made you examine yourself, but like so much deeper, right? Generations, like you're going back generations. And that's like, it's hard because you have to, it's just, I'm, you know, I've been in therapy. <laughs> and now I'm this person uh, okay. that talks about Everyone being in therapy, therapy, right? Me. I've, like, become <laughs> this, I've become this person. <laughs> and it's, but it's, it's called doing the work because it's not easy. It's not easy to examine yourself and to think about why do I think this way and to try to unthink these things that you've been taught that are so deeply ingrained in you that you don't even fucking know why. You don't even fucking know why you're acting this way or why you feel this way. And I, yeah, it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful thing that, that you're challenging yourself and like that you have taken that challenge and turned it into your work. Yeah. And challenging a whole industry. Yeah. You know what? I, I took this very intense course called Unity Over Comfort with a lovely um, anti-racism educator, Monique Melton. And I always have her voice in my head, you know, bring your people along, <laughs> bring your people along. Yeah. And that's sort of what I have in my head. It's like, I just going to keep talking. I'm just going to keep talking and yeah. try to bring my people along because that's the only way we're going to make any progress. Yeah. So the people that you find kind of giving you a little bit of pushback, like fair enough. I get it. We're all conditioned. But do you find that the pushback comes because they are unwilling to like really, to, I guess, to do the work to look within themselves? Or do you find the pushback because like maybe they're genuinely unhappy visually with what they see and they, they hear you, but they want to, they want to lose weight or they want to change their body regardless. Elizabeth, that is such a good question. Yeah. What I notice, and it's because I'm older, a lot of the clients that I personally work with right now tend to be older women. Mm -hmm. And the longer you're swimming in the sea, diet culture, I think the harder it is and the more conditioning you've had. So the harder it is to, you know, again, I'm using this analogy of the onion, you have too many layers to peel. I just actually had a woman I've been working with for quite a while, who's doing beautifully with letting go of diets, but the pull of, oh my God, I gain weight in this pandemic is so strong that she actually needed to take a break. Mm. So I think that people can only go as far as they can. And I, but what I noticed, people start the work. And they'll come back. They might they might go on a diet. And I totally understand. Mm-hmm. Just like, by the way, I want to say I totally understand why Oprah is continuing like the quest of finding her perfect body. I, it, it, you know, it makes it makes sense. You know? Yeah. Anyone in the public eye, these these lovely celebrities who, who lose weight in the public, they they, you know, it's understandable. Um, but I think people do come back because they eventually gain the weight back and they see that they're miserable. Mm hmm. You know, the real success stories are the people who say to me, thank God I'm not dieting. Like, I don't think I could have gotten through the pandemic if I was focused on what I should or shouldn't eat. Mm-hmm. And I have to agree. Yeah. Speaking of like older women, I mean, first of all, it does really suck that there are women who have gone their entire lives and are now older and are still trying to find whatever that is that they're looking for, whether it's to be skinny, whether it's to you know, just feel like they look like this ideal person that they've imagined Mm -hmm. for their entire life. Or maybe they're looking for something else, but they think this is what is going to make them happy. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, how do you even address like someone who's been in and out of diet culture for years? I mean, like maybe 30 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Like those are the clients that I work with. Those are the tough ones. Mm -hmm. And my mantra is I just meet them where they are, you know, and slowly, slowly, I really have to hear them and and hold space for them validate that what they're feeling is real of course you think you should lose weight when you go to the doctor because you're menopausal you're looking for some relief and the doctor says oh my god your bmi is so high you need to go on a diet or or the client that i've been working with for a long time who's doing so well whose doctor says huh would you be interested in bariatric surgery i mean when clients go to their physicians Mm -hmm. and that's the message that they hear right away it is really challenging. Mm-hmm. I've had some groups 
because I think there's a lot of, um, you know, being in community is so important to when you're changing the way that we see the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's like being a salmon swimming upstream. So I do that with groups, but also I think the most important thing is that I just hold space and keep reminding them that, you know, were you happy when you were dieting, when your weight was X, Y, Z, were you feeling better? Were you happy? Mm-hmm. And sort of then hearing them say, you know, no, I still thought I was fat. I still thought I had to lose more weight. And sort of I just kind of keep going back to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Peeling, the, la- yeah, yeah, peeling so the layers It again. sounds like, uh, and I was kind of saying this to Alyssa, but it, it's, I guess it's surprising to me because you think of, you know, a nutritionist and I think of somebody who's going to talk to you about food, right? About like the things that you're eating. But it's it's really so much deeper than that. And... It's, it sounds like you do a lot of therapy work also. Yeah, you're also a therapist. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I, I am a nutrition therapist, but okay. I work, mm. you know, I've been doing this work with eating disorders. Yeah, talk After to After I us. did the work with the, with the kids and, you know, doing weight loss, I slowly, slowly ended up having people that would come to me and it was clear they had eating disorders. Yeah. And so I had to, you know, do that very, very intense deep work and supervision with therapists and And you need to work in a team with other physicians, you know, physicians and therapists and psychiatrists. You need to have a whole group um, to deal with an eating disorder. Okay. I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about this. I know you just saw me get very comfortable, but I'm actually dealing with this in my personal life with somebody who's like very close to me and is older. And we're just realizing that this is a severe eating disorder but it's not the way that you – it's not the way that I'd ever seen it before. It's not about losing weight. It's not about being thin. It's not about, mm-hmm. you know, like the 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 Daria and Quinn, like eating disorders in the 90s. Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean to like minimize it by that way. But it's just so much deeper in that this is – some something terrible happened to this person at some point mm-hmm. in their life. Mm-hmm. And this is – and it's manifesting its way in this way. Do you know what I'm saying? And right. so – absolutely. And it's, mm-hmm. I'm curious, I guess, just to kind of talk a little bit more about that because it's something that I don't, I've never heard anybody speak about and maybe selfishly because I'm going through this and because you specialize in this, especially with older people. It's like, is that something that you see often? I, I want to just understand a little bit more about what you're describing. Or there's something yeah. called ARFID. It's the avoidant restrictant eating disorder, someone who has aversion to eating certain textures and a lot of food fears. Versus you're saying this is somebody who doesn't really have body image worries, yes. but is is it a restrictive eating disorder? I think I want to understand a little bit it more seems, of that. Okay, because I've been listening to like a lot of podcasts where they're speaking about eating disorders, so I'm kind of understanding mm-hmm. it a little bit more. It's like there's all of these arbitrary rules that mm-hmm. ca- on the surface do make sense and that like, oh, I've got diabetes, so I can't eat that. But the reality uh-huh. is you're not eating anything. So to have something with sugar is better than to have nothing at all. But you'll say I can't have it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like just creating kind of rules. So it sounds like I'm just going to make this, you know, statement that I'm not a doctor and not a therapist. I can't make a diagnosis. But when following food rules to an extreme becomes something like you're describing, it's it's orthorexia. It's not an official diagnosis, but um, it probably will be at some point in the, you know, in the, in the diagnosis I've heard of this. manual of the SM5. Okay. Uh, orthorexia is when you have to eat everything then a quote unquote clean, perfect, the food, you know, it just has to be so. Um, and what you're describing, making excuses, even though, yes, having sugar is, of course, better than having zero, nothing. Right, right. Um, and claiming that you're diabetic. Right. You know, honestly, diabetics can eat sugar. Right. Everything becomes sugar in our blood eventually, even protein foods and, you know, even people who think they're on keto eventually... Our cells need glucose to survive. Right. There's a large part of our population that don't talk about shit. They don't talk about shit to their families. They don't talk about... And generations and generations of that. And so I'm curious in your experience, if you're seeing more of kind of this trend of like older people, you know, because of diet culture, because of all these things that for years have been going on is now manifesting itself in their later days of life. I want to talk about that because that I'm very passionate about. So thank Mm. you for bringing this up. Sure. So midlife eating disorders are much more common than people will admit to. Midlife, and, you know, it's like, how do we define midlife? But, you know, generally speaking, like around 40-ish, 40-ish to beyond. We say midlife, menopause, and beyond. But this, this population, there are things that are going on in our lives that, I'll give you an example. Like when my daughter was converting. You know, when people are facing illness and death, death of a spouse, divorce, 
kids leaving the home. Like midlife is a very challenging time of transition. Mm -hmm. And so if someone has had a history of dieting, even if it's you know under control or someone has like had an eating disorder when they were younger and they've recovered, the challenge of both the emotional stuff that's going on in their lives, as well as hormonal shifts that occur during perimenopause, mm -hmm. which by the way, no one talks about, mm -hmm. no one talks about around somewhere around the mid forties, our body starts to have a little less estrogen um, and progesterone. I, I don't got not to get into the hormones exactly, but I'll just say the shift, the up, the down, it leads to a lot of unfortunate, um, symptoms that people don't necessarily, they're not aware of. Mm -hmm. So it affects mood, it affects sleep. Some people have hot flashes. Um, it's actually like 45 different symptoms of perimenopause. Yeah. And so all of this sort of combined with the emotional stuff can lead someone to restrict. Yeah. And when life is really challenging, going on a diet is like a, an easy solution. Mm -hmm. I'll share something personal. I remember this, that when I was 50, ish. I had my mother in a hospital. She was sick. She had cancer. My mother-in-law was in another hospital. Like seriously, I was driving across New York. Mm -hmm. I was driving from, from Long Island into the city yeah. back and forth to go to two different hospitals. Yeah. I was on a diet. It's like, oh. Hey, let me bring that little thing that comes in a package. It's really easy yeah. because it was convenient and easy. And I went, why did I think changing my body was going to change anything? Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff that can lead some down the unfortunate path of eating disorders. Right. Yeah. The holidays are here, which is perfect timing for today's sponsor, OneSkin. With OneSkin's revolutionary approach to tackling skin aging at the source, you can wrap up 2023 with the gift of radiant and healthy skin for yourself or your loved ones. I love to give the gift of beauty. Y'all know that these things can get expensive. And when we're talking about self-care and loving our skin and loving ourselves, it can be hard for some of us more than others to allow ourselves to have that gift. So it's always a nice gift to give somebody that you know would really love a skincare product or something that just makes them feel great but they would never get it for themselves. And why am I pushing OneSkin on y'all? What makes OneSkin the best? Their products are powered by the groundbreaking peptide, the S1, which is the first ingredient that's scientifically proven to prevent the accumulation of senescent cells. Y'all, we talked about these zombie cells in one of our most recent episodes. They are the primary culprit behind skin aging. And the reason one skin is so great is because the S1 peptide has actually been proven in the lab to reduce the biological age of skin by several years. That means that it not only prevents, but it slows down skin aging, leaving you with healthier, more hydrated, and glowing skin. One Skin just launched their mini bundles and they're so cute. I loved getting this little gift in the mail. It has the face and eye topical supplement, the body lotion, and a cleanser. And it comes in this cute little travel bag. And I use this today. And honestly, I love these products. I always talk about how I love that it's scent free, fragrance free. I love that it just works in with the skincare routine that I already have. I love that it's helping my skin barrier. Y'all, you know that I always talk about my impaired barrier. But as we age, all of our barriers are slowly becoming impaired. So we all need everything that is in one skin to be beautiful and to age beautifully. If you're traveling this winter, one skin has your mini skincare essentials covered. And if you're giving gifts this holiday season, one skin's mini bundles are the perfect stocking stuffers. One skin is the world's first skin longevity company. They address skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging, so skin feels and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. New customers get 15% off. I told you, get you a gift. Get your beauty baddies some gifts with the code TRUEBEAUTY at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code TRUEBEAUTY. The new year's approaching. Come through 2024. Now is the best time to invest in your skin. Age healthy with OneSkin.
I think for me, like when I was in high school and I, I was never diagnosed with an eating disorder, but we can say disordered eating for sure. Mm-hmm. I think it was a big control thing. Like mm-hmm. it was a way to control my life in some way. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. It's interesting that like that was because it is easy, right? You're just like, I can control this easily. Well, it's interesting mm-hmm. because what you're saying and hearing and hearing um, what you're describing, like I'm going through something very, very similar in my own personal life, driving like driving to two hospitals. Girl, I'm, oh, the, I, I'm in it right now. But it's so interesting to me that you chose and many people choose to control what they eat, because for me, I am so aware that I need to be eating correctly right now because I need, I'm so emotional that like, I need all of my fucking wits right now. Like I need yeah, to be the best yeah. me as possible. So I'm like, bitch, have you had pro like I'm doing the check every morning, protein, sugar, coffee, <laughs> water, like how are you doing? So you can be your best you, but it's yeah. taken me a long time to get to this point. Cause I got a lot of fucking balls to keep in the air. So I've, I've learned how Absolutely. To, to keep it all going. Good for you. Good for you. That self care. like, well, Thank you. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I guess what I'm saying no, is, it's, it's no, no, so no. Ca- can you can I just say yes? Toot your own horn because you're a role model for anyone who, who's out there dealing with the same shit. So thank yes, you. Yes. But that's my point. Is like it's so counterintuitive, and it's not anybody's fault. It's like it's this fucked up world that we're living in that it says, let me restrict myself instead of doing what I need to do to be the best to me so I can provide yes. to the world. Mm-hmm. And it's so fucked up. Alyssa was bringing this up that like every time women get ahead a little bit, there's some other food restriction or fashion restriction or something that holds us back and keeps us back. And because of that, I can't fucking wear heels anymore, dude. It makes me so <laughs> mad. But I'm like, every time I put in a pair of heels, it's like, bitch, how are you going to run? You can't run away from anybody in these shoes. <laughs> it's like ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you that I am five feet, but probably really four foot eleven. And I wish that I could wear heels, <laughs> but you know what? I haven't seen a soul in a year and a half, so what the hell does it matter? Yeah, exactly. Honestly. I'm five feet tall, and I just cannot wear heels. I wear like unfashionable clogs. Oh, I see them. We don't talk about her shoes, but, but I, I, but it's comfort. My point is, it's it's the truth. It's like the society. It's the, the society keeps us. On this like weak ass loop. Oh my god! Instead of like a tight fucking leash though of yes. like this is how you act, this is how you look, yes. this is how you shall live. Yes. Especially oh, she's going woman. through all this, but look, she looks great. Did you lose weight? Your your mother and your mother in law are sick, but did you lose weight, girl? Oh, but you, you look, look great. great. That's it. That's right? it. Do you know how many clients I have who have said to me that their eating disorders were just activated and continued and promoted because people like they were in larger bodies and they kept losing weight because they were starving or over exercising or purging or doing some behavior that was not healthy Mm -hmm. but they looked good or having someone who has cancer losing you know whatever and someone saying you look great like that is fucking crazy yes it's crazy it's like yeah i'm so hesitant to tell somebody if i notice that somebody's losing weight i'm so hesitant to say anything because i'm trying to deprogram I'm trying to deprogram and be like, girl, you look like we just saw somebody. And I felt bad as soon as I said it because I was like, you're not supposed to say that, girl. You're not supposed to be like, oh, girl, you look so svelte, even though like she did look good. But like that's that's not it shouldn't be. Oh, she could have been sick. Do you know what I mean? As far she as I knew, been she could have been listen, sick. But listen, you know what? This stuff is so deeply wired. That's why this work of undoing all of this, undoing diet culture, undoing white supremacy. It's it's. Every minute Mm -hmm. you have to be aware and challenging yourself. It's hard. It's darn hard work. It really is. And I I think also just like deprogramming myself from thinking anything about anyone's body. I really Mm -hmm. try to just like, why am I looking at someone so much to be like, oh, like her, she looks thin, or her hips look small, whatever. Mm-hmm. Things in the past that I would notice about someone, I've really tried to like just let go of that because mm-hmm. it don't fucking matter. It's not about just saying it. It's like I don't, I don't even want to think it anymore. Yeah. I don't even want to fucking think yeah. anything you know, about you anyone's body. That I, I totally <laughs> dropped the ball on. You were talking about fat, fat positivity and sort of moving from this body positive, like you know, having a little belly. I can handle having a little belly. To like, my God. Fat people deserve to take up space and they're just fine as they are. And who are we to comment? Looking at people in larger bodies, all different shapes and sizes and colors, it's very, very good for our brain. And it really helps us to change how we see the world. Mm-hmm. Um, because I have definitely been able to shift what I see. Yeah. Not always, listen, not always 100%. I sometimes have to challenge myself. 
Uh, it's so funny. I have someone that said to me, Erica, could you just find me someone who looks like me who's just a little bit rounder? I don't want to look. <laughs> so we'll start where you are. It's okay. <laughs> but I, I invite everyone to sort of change their feed, really look at different bodies and, um, and, and take the, take your, I think it's called the Harvard um, internalized bias test. Like you can take a test to see how, how fat phobic you are. Oh. Um, and I definitely have moved along. Like I actually prefer people who are a little bit rounder now. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can change how you think. Cause you know what? I, I, you're absolutely right. And like, tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that I am. The reality is like, we're not really talking about fat men because you know what? Even Boba Fett had fucking princess Leia in a bikini and nobody gave a shit. They're just like that fat I fucking slob. It's fine. Be the king. Agree. We're talking about fat women. Do you know what I'm saying? It's true. It's the I truth. do. I do. And I just it's have to say, I feel bad for the fat men. They're sort of left out of the conversation. We need to think about including them. But <laughs> yeah. it's the fat women. Yes. <laughs> I yes. Agree. But it's 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 unfair because. You're right. We should be talking about fat men, too, and body positivity for them. But it doesn't matter. They can still be rich and fat. They can be rich, fat, and bald, and it don't matter. Okay, but they can't be poor, fat, and bald. And I guess that's the problem with America. That is correct. <laughs> that is really fucked up, by the yeah. way. Yes. It's the truth. And let me it's just true. mention yeah. that it's not just men and women. We have to be fair. There are people yes. who are non-binary. Non-binary, Let's exactly. put them into the mix. Just, yes. just saying. No, that's another moment. <laughs> Thank of, you. No, we're working. We're trying to be better about uh, staying off of the binary. I have so many clients that I work with who are struggling with, oh my God, my child is not who they, my child is a they, them. Can you please just keep reminding me? Like I'm seeing a lot of that. I know you're younger. You probably see some of your peers sort of transitioning or, or being totally. fluid. I'm, I, I'm not even going to use the right word. So I'm going to just apologize before I say anything. Yes. But you know, us older people, we have a lot of unlearning to do. It's a little harder. Us, um, us geriatric we, millennials as well. Even, uh, even us, us, even us, even us, a hundred percent us, dude. I embarrass mm -hmm. myself in front of my clients all the time, all the time. And, but all you can do is try and get better. Absolutely. So, apologize and move past it. That's it. Like, I'm not sure. My, my daughter called me. She didn't call me out. She called me in two days ago. So I, I listen. <laughs> <laughs> she called me in. I love that. Do you feel like there is. I don't know other than my parents. I don't really know when many people in their 60s or older. Um, do you feel like there is a shift at all of people, especially women, since it seems like that's who you usually work with, accepting kind of not having diets and accepting um, like loving themselves? Like I, I just couldn't imagine going through my whole fucking life and even still 60, 70 years into my life mm -hmm fighting an eating disorder. I mean, maybe it is like an addiction and it's something you always kind of fight. I don't know. I don't want to speak for everybody, but you know, I'm only one person with my personal experience. You know, I just want to say being a straight white That's cisgender, enough. you know, human living where I do, you know, I have an online presence. So I do get people sort of joining my courses and my programs. It's hard, hard because it's been, you know, 40 plus years, 50 plus years. I think that it's easier when you're younger to be honest, and the, you know, the thoughts aren't so deep, deeply baked in, mm. but I do see a trend. You know, I have a Facebook group that's for women at mid, like midlife menopause and beyond starting at 40. Like that's just want to put this out there. Our bodies really do change yes. and it's a little shocking and we don't talk about it enough. And it's, it, we really do need to be talking about diet culture and talking about aging culture. Yes. And like in this society, we're not allowed to get older either. All right, well, let's talk about this. I'm so glad that you brought this, this up. I mean, it makes me so mad. No, I love that you brought this up. Okay, can I just say you, that... you are adorable, both of you. You are so adorable. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> I love being with young people. Yeah. Okay. It's just like, no, but honestly, how? I noticed this recently. I noticed this recently, and it's very, because I'm 35, right? And so I'm like, I'm 35. Our What's eggs happening? are old, though, you know? We're all, we're getting old. No, dude, some 21 is. Yeah, no. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, you know, according you, to. The, Medical professionals, well, even. Okay, that's true. We're geriatric in some in you know, some senses. We're geriatric moms and we're geriatric millennials. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. But I did notice in the past six months that my body is just like what I call settling. In that, it's the same settling that I've noticed in like, I'm going to use this <laughs> hilarious example, but it's because we, we all know who I'm talking about. Beyonce. Beyonce had three fucking kids, right? Before that, she was curvy, but she was a, a slim woman. Beyonce has so called, we'll say that she's back, quote unquote, which what the fuck does that mean? Mm -hmm. She's still a beautiful, curvy woman, but she is not her pre-child size. She's, she's thickums. 
You know, she's got some. She she's a is, woman she's now. Forty yet. She, she I think, I think she just turned 40. But it's the same thing that I'm seeing in my body. It's like I'm not necessarily a size bigger. It's mm-hmm. just everything has settled. My boobs are boobier. My hips are hippier. So, you know? so let me just say that this <laughs> does happen. Yes. Our bodies change. They shift. There's so many. There's, I mean, honestly, there's so many things to say about this. There was just a study that came out a, a month or two ago that challenged this whole idea that, you know, hey, we're supposed to gain weight as we get older. We get like, you know, our bodies, we get thickness around the waist, like I, and I, that's protective. There was a study that came out that, that, that said bullshit, your body's metabolism stays the same, you know, really until you're 60. Um, And like, what does that do for the rest of us? I think that times change or, or, or lifestyles change, like through this pandemic, I'm just going to talk about me for a second. I won't talk about you. All right. I've been sitting on my ass, like, (laughs) I'm afraid to go outside and get coronavirus. That's the truth. All right. I just said it. I mean, I walk, I exercise, but I'm definitely doing less going places, less moving. Mm. And I think that um, unless you're really actively doing physical activity, doing, you know, strength training, as we get older, that's very important to sort of maintain our lean mass. Our bodies are going to shift and change. Yeah. You know, we do have this genetic genetic set point weight. I was kind of talking about like, look, your ancestors kind of see where, like, what's the, what's the place that your body settles into when you're eating sort of to appetite and moving in your capacity. Mm -hmm. And I say that because listen, you know, not everyone can go lift weights and exercise. You know, what if you're in a wheelchair? Sorry to say you can't, you know, you're not going to get up and run. So we have to be within our capacity. Yeah. Your weight's going to be where it is. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what I say. Yeah. I don't hate it. That's it. Look, I don't hate it. Yeah. I feel very like I think that's where I am now because now that I don't drink as much as I did in my 20s, I think I'm at like a steady point in my life where I all my jeans fit always. <laughs> there was a time where it was like I was going out all the time. Maybe mm-hmm. it was bloat, who knows, but my weight was not that there's anything wrong with your weight fluctuating, but I was just all over the place. Now I feel like I eat when I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. I eat vegetables a lot, but not all the time. I love bread. Mm-hmm. And, and why shouldn't you love bread? Yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. There was a time in my life where I was like, I shouldn't eat bread. I just shouldn't. Everyone told me not to. That's one yeah. of those rules that mm-hmm. I have to challenge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you don't allow yourself bread, you know what happens? You crave bread. The second you encounter it, you're going to eat the whole loaf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to just eat intuitively. That's what I say. Eat intuitively. Yeah, eat, eat the damn like, bread. That was life too short. That's the other thing I was going to say is like not that we have to wrap this up in, in a tight little bow, but if we could leave our listeners with like something that we can do to challenge our thoughts, something that we can do to, in a step towards progression. Because I don't like to just bitch about stuff like a millennial. Do you know what I mean? I don't just like to just complain. I like to solutions oriented. Let's talk about how we can maybe challenge our thoughts, maybe challenge the people around us to think differently or yeah. So when anyone has a bad body image day, you know, I think that's sort of one of those thoughts that we go to like this, right? Mm -hmm. Wake up like, oh my God, I feel blank or looking at yourself at a certain angle. Stop and take a breath and ask yourself, where does that thought come from? Just, Just that pausing, taking a break, taking a deep breath gives you the moment to just think about where did that thought come from? You may not know the answer, but if you can just stop and and keep doing that and challenge it, it's a start. Yeah. It's it's a process. It's not, it does not happen overnight, to be honest. Yeah. And some people who it's very ingrained may need some therapy, real therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy work, Mm -hmm. but just realize that you are the owner of your body. You are the, you are the owner and the keeper and you may not have to love your body, but it's yours to take care of. And that's kind of where I start, like tolerating this is your body. You don't, again, you don't have to love it, yeah. but you got to feed it. You got to move it. You yeah. got to give it rest, work on not having too, too much stress. Like we have to live a life that is enjoyable. We only have now. I think that this pandemic has shown us that. Mm-hmm. So true. Like appreciating your body. Like yes. I, I try to appreciate what it does. And mm-hmm. like my goals for when I exercise are so different from when I was younger. Like mm-hmm. I, do it because I know that movement is good, especially because my job requires me bending over, hunching over. So mm-hmm. doing yoga, doing exercises to strengthen my core so my back doesn't hurt when I'm working. Having goals like that instead of working out being like to burn calories, to be skinny, to do these things. Mm-hmm. It's so – it makes me wa- actually want to exercise. I love that. But it's taken me You know, I tell people that 
particularly as we are aging, the fountain of youth is moving, is moving. Um, yeah, it just not sitting all day, just yeah. getting your rear end if you can within your capacity. And of course, finding things that you enjoy. But I also like to talk about the mental health benefits, mm-hmm. how important it is to move. And you're more creative, you're more accomplished when you're moving instead of yeah. sitting. It's so true. there's a lot of a lot of reasons to move. I, think, I agree. I like that. I think That's also true. like changing. I mean, our culture, like speaking of diet culture, hand in hand with that is like this fitness culture, right? And oh, yes. the idea <laughs> that like exercise is for a purpose, and the purpose is weight loss. Whereas like exercise is the purpose is just to move your fucking body. It's to get the lymph going. It's to feel it's, good. It's to yes. clear your mind. Lubricate the joints. Ooh, lubricate the joints. Yes. 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 You know, I, I was in LA like a month ago and I took this amazing yoga class and I've been doing yoga for like 10 years. And so it's kind of, you know, I've maybe had classes that I loved more than others, but this might've been like one of the best I've ever taken. And I really liked the instructor. And when I went to go look her up on Instagram, I was like, oh, I already follow her. But I guess I never really like paid much attention. And I really like her classes because she never mentions because you'll notice even though yoga is supposed to be this spiritual movement, I've taken classes where they do act like it's a workout and it's almost this like boot campy workout, which is fine if that's what you're looking to get out of it. But I've been doing her online classes and she will talk as you're doing certain movements. She's like, okay, now you're lubing up the joints in your hips and moving the synovial fluid out of blah, blah, blah. And it's so nice to visualize something that isn't fucking like you're going to have great abs after this or you're going to have. I love that. Absolutely. Oh my God. Oh, her name's Kyle Miller Yoga. Yeah. I like that I mean, it's not her name. That's her. I don't even like yoga and it makes me want to do it. You're right. Because Mm -hmm. yeah. Because when I visualize moving, that's what I visualize. I I visualize like extension and like, you know, like, yeah, things stretching and moving and not, I don't know. Yeah. I don't visualize abs. (laughs) <laughs> I yeah. want like you know what I mean I, I guess my and, point and is when I do like... it turns me off when I do I'm just like no you can't no that's that's no bread that means no you know you know what I mean and that's trash it shouldn't be yeah. that way but I you're think right. that that could be good for a lot of people if they're trying to get out of that mindset because it's harmful towards them you know mm-hmm. for some people it's like yeah fun I want to get abs whereas with yeah. other people mm-hmm. I think it can become obsessive oh totally you know, absolutely. Listen, as as we get older, it's not just about having abs. It's about um, protecting your bones, having yes. not having osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's all this weird stuff that happens when you get older. I'm sorry to tell I you. Know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Real it's, quick, it's, how do we keep your us- heart healthy? <laughs> keeping your brain, not having Alzheimer's. It's like keeping um, being mentally acute. Bones. Did I say that? Bones. Cancer prevention. Osteoporosis. Gut health, like there's so many reasons to move. There's keeping so many sh- reasons. Look, keeping all this shit rocking. Is yeah, what, is what and I think that move. I. Oh, I actually. It's not till November because this gal is on um, maternity leave, but she's a nutritionist who I wanted to speak with her because I have stomach problems, and I really wanted to talk to someone about. I want. I took a while for me to find a nutritionist who specialized in stomach problems and didn't discuss mm-hmm. like weight loss and diet and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited to talk with her because, and yeah, I think that any time I've had stomach problems, I'm also a Jew and I feel like, I don't know, there's something in my DNA because everyone in my family. It is in the DNA. I have to say, I agree with you. Yeah. But it's at the point that I'm like, I got to do something about this. But anyway, I also think that maybe later in life, I'd love to see a nutritionist to talk about like aging, like how to help with things like osteoporosis or it's osteoporosis, right? Things like that, maybe how to support my hormones while going through menopause stuff. And I, yeah, I think that this has opened up a whole new world to me of like nutritionists or dietitians. It's not all just weight loss. There's actually yeah. so much no, more to it. And it's so, not weight loss. So yeah. if you, and I have a blog that talks a lot about, you know, quote unquote, healthy aging and talks about these things to sort <gasps> yeah, of yeah. Get Can you without an emphasis on diet. I call it the non-diet approach to midlife and menopause. Shout out your blog. Yeah. So what's your blog called? Follow. How do we find it? It's just on my website. It's very simple. EricaLeon.com. I love it. <laughs> no, I love this. Love it's important to talk about these things. I think it's, we're, look, we're a generation, we're multiple generations now of women who, for the first time, are able to connect, are able to have these conversations, are able to tell each other the truth without somebody staring down our back or threatening to take our show mm-hmm. off the air. Or, do you know what I mean? And so we can have these discussions and and we need to, because otherwise you're just out there 
you know, figuring it out on your own. It's like, this is completely separate, but it's, I've been seeing memes that it's like, we got to stop talking about birth so cute. We got to stop calling the shit the miracle of life. That's why they don't take us seriously when we're like, it hurts. Because they're like, oh, you're, it's not cute. Because we use it like these little- It is not cute. It is no. terrible. Girl, I know. <laughs> but it's wonderful in the end. <laughs> Right. But 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 we can talk about this. My point is, I'm so grateful to you and for sharing this information and for speaking so openly and honestly, because now that I'm past 35, I'm realizing how obsessed we are with 22 year olds. And the majority of us are 35 and plus. So we need to have these <laughs> yeah. conversations. We need to you talk are not going to look the way you did when you were 22. You're not going to look the way you did when you Thank were 18. God. And guess what? God. When you're 40. You're not going to look the way that you did when you were 30. I yeah. hate to say it, but our bodies change. So get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. appreciate the body you have right now. Yeah. Enjoy the body in this moment. Yes. That is, those are my parting words. Yeah. And try <laughs> and, and say, look, that. I'm trying to be around here for a long time. And that means I got to take care of this shit. That's I got, right. You know what I mean? Take care of that shit. <laughs> Uh, one day I won't drink as much tequila. I've been, gotten way better. You're all right. You do. Yeah, I've gotten way, way better, actually. So do you have any <laughs> final parting words? Any play, anything besides your websites? Can you tell us where we can find you on Instagram? All of the internet things. So my my business is Erica Leon Nutrition. My Instagram is Erica Leon Nutrition. Love <laughs> Very it. Very simple to follow my name. Super <laughs> and you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, LinkedIn. I think with the women in my age group, we tend to be more on Facebook. So that's probably more where you'll find me. I think you're right. Yeah. My mom loves I know Facebook. you're right. <laughs> yeah, send your mom's over. Exactly. <laughs> Hey guys. Hey. I hope you had fun listening to our chat with Erica. Is she's adorable. She's the best. And I wonder if any of you can relate to things that she was saying or if any of you have thought about. I know that I've thought about not a lot, but every now and then about getting older and what that means for my body. Not necessarily what it looks like, but how I'm going to feel. Mm -hmm. Um, because I want to feel good, at least for like another 20 years. Shit. Only 20. We need more than that. That's only going to put you at 55, girl. Oh, That's yeah. only five okay, years so at least like 40, Another 40 years. Yeah, we can. We need lots of, uh, <laughs> we need lots of energy. We need all the nutrients. <laughs> we do. <laughs> all the nutrients. But I think I love that. Is it called dietetics? Is that what you'd call it? Maybe. It that, it's taking, <laughs> that it's taking on a whole new way. Like you can talk to a nutrition or dietitian about Things that have fucking nothing to do with your weight. Totally. How nice is that? Totally. Maybe you're someone who's just like, I feel like I don't get enough protein in my day. I'd like to learn how to do that. Or you're like me and you have some gut problems and you'd like to talk to someone about how to eat to support your gut health better. Mm -hmm. Things like that. I just feel like it's so different. And and I don't know, maybe it's been different for a bit and I just got on the bandwagon now, but I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think, think it's a whole new world Traditionally, out there. nutrition has equated to weight loss. Totally. In some way or another, right? Even if you were seeing a nutrition. I know there are like nutritionists in hospitals sometimes, maybe to help people with diabetes, things like that. But I do believe that it all comes from a very um, kind of like old school mentality a mm -hmm. lot of the time. And look, food is, food is confusing. Using. Food, like, it nourishes us, but it's also, like, cultural. It also, mm -hmm. it just, it's it means so much to so many different people. And it's a lot to unpack. And, like, you don't have to unpack it by yourself. Maybe there's things that are going on, like, you're between, within your relationship with food that you don't even fucking realize. Things that are happening yeah. that you, they started before you could even you know, verbalize the feelings, right? Like who knows? And it's worth, you know, looking into those things. If it's bothering you, if it's something that you're working through that's inhibiting you from living your best life from being your best self. And from being happy. And from being fucking happy. Also, uh, I made a mistake. I said uh, Boba Fett and I met Jabba the Hutt. My family are all fucking nerds and they'll kill me if I don't oh make that. Oh my God, they'll disown you. Yeah, oh, completely, completely. They already probably have. They already turned off the episode and they're like, this bitch. You haven't taught, she hasn't fucking learned anything. <laughs> I haven't learned us. anything. Calling fucking Bubba Fett, Job of the Hut, mix, messing up the joke. You guys knew what I meant, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, hope that landed. Write us and let us, let us know what you guys think. What did you guys think about all this? Like, yeah, what, think, did, what did you all think? Yeah, I'm what curious. are your thoughts about your bodies? How do you feel about your bodies? How does your... How do, yeah, just what's your relationship with your body? What's your relationship with food? It's all so nuanced and it's all so different. And I'm really curious because, you know, unfortunately, I think as as people, 
period, but especially as uh, people who are female presenting, there's a lot of emphasis on our bodies, mm-hmm. a lot. And it's very hard to navigate living without at least thinking about it. I don't think you can. I think in one way or another, you have to have a a feeling about it, right? Or For sure. Yeah, I'm just curious. We're just curious, guys. Let us know. I mean, I'm wondering if any of you were raised on like a farm in the middle of nowhere, do you still have the same feelings about body image? I don't know. I'm curious. I always joke. I'm like, if I were to have kids, I'd have to raise them on a farm in the middle of fucking nowhere with no Wi-Fi, nothing to like fuck with their... Like young little brains. Well, how are they going to find somebody else to marry? It can't be in farm next door. Okay, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I yeah. just wonder. Like, yeah, is it's it because curious. I grew up on Long Island and totally, Queens? Totally. That's why a lot of people are trying to go off the grid and trying to do that homestead. Yeah. But also, yeah. it could get weird. Shit could get weird. <laughs> Look, let's not encourage people to go off the grid and raise their kids. <laughs> but I wonder, those of you who maybe grew up in rural areas totally. where um, I just assume there maybe wasn't as much of an emphasis put on like looks and. Or if you were encouraged to be strong. Were you encouraged right. to be. Yeah, what? Just to, we just want to know. We just want to know. I don't know. I'm curious. I'm just mm-hmm. curious. It's all about exploring and celebrating our differences and talking about them. And totally, you know, especially culture to culture is also different. Like, I don't know. In black culture, are we expect it to be waif like. I don't think so. Everybody's trying to say, "Honey, you too thin. You gotta eat. You gotta put some meat on them bones." But uh. yeah, I'm curious to know. I'm curious. Right, right into us. At right in PO box. No, I'm kidding. Like oh in my the magazine. God, yes. like right into us at PO box. Well, we should get a PO box. You guys can write in. Would you like? We that? fucking should. Would you like to? Well, we'll find out. You guys let us know. Do you do you like the email? Do you even know how to like you know send a regular mail? A regular letter? Oh my god! I remember in second grade that was something we learned. Oh yeah, how to like address and I was like, bitch, I know envelope. how to do this. It might I'm not be people. a thing now. They're like, here's how you type a fucking email. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, this is a tangent at B.O. Tangent. You know All right, guys. where to find us if you want to write in on Instagram at True Beauty Brooklyn Podcast. It's so funny watching Elizabeth. She wants to talk so bad. She's like, fuck this bitch. No, I'm over here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing like all these hand motions. You guys can't see it, but I'm doing all these hand motions I'm that are like. I'm joking. She looks, wicka, like wicka, wicka. She, she looks like she works at an airport because she has the headphones on and she's like doing direction <laughs> positions with her hand. Oh, um, or. Do you want to tell them how they can email us? No, I'm just sitting here and make, doing sign language. <laughs> um, <laughs> True Beauty Brooklyn Podcast at gmail.com. And I think that's it. That was my British accent. I know it was weird. We love it. Don't you ever apologize <laughs> for your accent. I don't know where. Did you ever oh apologize for your accents? That's it, guys. We love you. This has been a COC BK production produced by us. Elizabeth Taylor and Alex Shapiro. Our engineer is Bart Tripoli. Our theme music composer is Zebra Sonic. Our artwork is by Garrett Ross. Our photos, hair, and makeup are by Sabrina and Joe Holdsworth. If you're an advertiser interested in advertising on our show, go to midroll.com/ads. For more information, go to exactlyrightmedia.com. Hold up. 